peace building and sustaining peace, promoting conflict prevention, empowering all actors, including women and youth. I also want to thank the briefers, Ms. Rosemary Di Carlo, Under Secretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, His Excellency Mr. Sergio Franca Daniz, Permanent Representative of Brazil to the United Nations and Chair of the Peacebuilding Commission, Mr. Abiodu Williams, Professor of the Practice of International Politics, Tufts University, and Ms. Sharon Bagwan Rose, Program Manager of the Pacific Women Mediators Network and International Steering Group Gender Liaison of Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict for their insightful perspectives on this topic. The topic for today is quite relevant and timely. We also commend the focus on women and youth, given their role and both forming the larger percentage of the global population. The Twin General Assembly and Security Council resolutions on sustaining peace adopted in 2016, A7262 and 2282 offered an opportunity for the United Nations system to rethink how to prevent and address violent conflicts <coughs> in a more holistic and inclusive way, focused on addressing the root causes and using a three-pillar approach. The resolutions provide a blueprint which suggests that to prevent the occurrence and reoccurrence of conflict, the United Nations and all other regional and sub-regional bodies and national stakeholders of peace and security should move towards people-centered comprehensive strategies that address the root causes of conflict. In that sense, there is need to invest in human development economic opportunities and social cohesion as pillars for sustainable peace. A comprehensive approach to conflict prevention will thus involve the strengthening of governance architecture, provision of decent jobs, protection of human rights, addressing food insecurity, facilitating access to justice and equality, and a consultative participation in the political governance system. Traditional approaches to conflict prevention have often focused on military and security measures such as peacekeeping and arms control. While these measures can play a role, they are often not enough to address the root causes of conflict. Comprehensive approaches take a broader view, recognizing that conflict often arises from a complex interplay of factors, including poverty, inequality, discrimination, especially against women and youth, environmental degradation, and weak governance. In the light of this, the Secretary General of the United Nations has provided a roadmap to prevent future conflicts and achieve global sustainable peace. He has noted that in order to protect and manage the global public good of peace, we need a peace continuum based on a better understanding of the drivers and systems of influence that are sustaining conflict, a renewed effort to agree on more effective collective security responses, and a meaningful set of steps to manage emerging risks with a view to preventing conflicts. In his new Agenda for Peace, the Secretary General calls for a number of specific actions. Firstly, to promote comprehensive approaches to conflict prevention, including strengthening the UN's preventive capacities. This includes investing in early warning systems, mediation resources, and conflict resolution expertise. Secondly, promoting partnerships including working with governments, civil society organizations, and the private sector to address the root causes of conflicts. And finally, focusing on prevention, which includes shifting resources from conflict response to conflict prevention and investing in initiatives that build resilience and address grievances before they escalate into violence. Mr. President, as we contemplate enhancing the UN's conflict prevention architecture and engage in discussions to shape the upcoming 
part of the future. It is crucial to acknowledge inequalities alongside unaddressed grievances and exclusion, especially of women and youth, as strategic risks to peace and security. In our approach to conflict prevention, we must also draw lessons from past experiences, recognizing instances where early warning signs and recommendations put forward by United Nations bodies, including the Special Procedures Mandate, were not effectively implemented. These oversights underscore the imperative of heeding early warnings and implementing recommendations swiftly and effectively to prevent conflicts from escalating. This therefore begs the question, how do we empower and invest in people, especially women and youth, to promote conflict prevention? First, we must embrace inclusivity and diversity by ensuring meaningful participation of women and youth, marginalized communities and civil society in national and regional peace processes. In this regard, we must champion gender equality as a critical factor in preventing conflict and commit to making sure that the initiatives of grassroots peace builders are recognized and supported and that more formal and higher level peace building efforts, including national dialogues, start taking parity seriously. Second, member states should support national and local capacities for conflict resolution, governance and sustainable development. In view of this, we must respect the agency and leadership of local communities in shaping their own peace building efforts with women and youth reprising leadership roles. In Peace Building Journey of Sierra Leone with the Peace Building Commission, the principle of national ownership was strictly adhered to with the initiatives proffered by the country being fully supported by the Peace Building Commission. Third, efforts should be geared towards promoting dialogue, reconciliation, and cross-cultural understanding to heal divisions and build trust between communities and countries with women and youth in the forefront of discussions. Additionally, addressing grievances and injustice that fear conflict through transparent and accountable mechanisms should be prioritized. Finally, we must integrate sustainable development into peace processes by recognizing the strong link between poverty, environmental degradation and conflict. We should thus invest in initiatives that promote economic growth, resource management, and climate resilience for long-term stability. Mr. President, in Sierra Leone, we are already implementing the new Agenda for Peace. We have adopted and are currently implementing the One Fumble, which means One Family National Development Framework for inclusive community-led planning and development as part of our medium-term development priority. This framework came out of 13 years peace-building fieldwork during and after the conflict in Sierra Leone by Fambul Talk, meaning Family Talk, a Sierra Leonean NGO working in partnership with Catalyst for Peace. The One Fambul Framework is not only a planning and development tool, but also establishes social cohesion structures in communities and gives women a strong voice in peace building through the establishment of peace mother support groups in communities. They are active in election campaigns, advocacy and education, addressing conflict situations early before they become full-blown conflagrations. The framework is a model for transformative partnerships between national governments, civil society and international donor partners. We have also established an independent commission for peace and national cohesion to promote peace and development in the country through dialogue while paving the way for political cohesion and also mediation of disputes. The commission was very instrumental in facilitating the ongoing peaceful dialogue between the government and the main opposition party to address issues emerging from our multi-tier elections in June 20. 23 elections, leading to the signing of the Agreement for National Unity and its current implementation. 
In conclusion, Mr. President, preventing conflict takes a multilateral effort of the UN system, the international community, member states, and civil society organizations. This collaborative effort should not only be about sustaining peace, but also to address the drivers and root causes of conflict. In all of this, national ownership remains fundamental and the meaningful participation by women and youth an imperative. I thank you for listening. I thank Her Excellency Ms. Arahari for her statement. Mm -hmm.